Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Transitional Justice. Today I'm going to talk to Louis Ross. Um, he's a French person uh, in France, of course. And he, I guess he stayed up late for us or got up early. Thank you, Louis, for doing that. And right after this, we'll be back and we'll discuss um, the street scene. It's kind of lame is come current. We'll be right back. Bienvenue. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great. It's Tell us well. who you are. You are you're, you're, you have graduate degrees in what subjects? Um, litigation, European yeah, litigation. Yeah, European litigations, international law, focused on human rights. Mm, okay. That's very, um, that's current. In fact, matter of fact, um, later this week, we're doing a show about comparative um, justice systems. Um, between the countries of the EU um, and the United States, which is, uh, you know, um, it's, it's a hard comparison these days. Uh, you could tell us a lot about that, or maybe you could even join us if you have time. Anyway, so <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're talking about, um, you know, the, I guess the condition of the street scenes and the protests. And uh, I could you tell us, you know, uh, just to set the stage here, what is going on in the street? Yeah, um, so I, I wanted to talk a, take a bit of context in these uh, pension reforms. Uh, it was carried out by Emmanuel Macron's office uh, and Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne, as well as Olivier Dussopt, the Minister of Labour in France. Um, the flagship of this reform being the retirement, the le legal retirement age to 64 and not unless uh, 62. And this was after a complicated legislative process and a massive social movement, uh, the law was validated on April 14, 2023. Um, it is at uh, his new year wishes that Emmanuel Macron uh, recalled the objective of answering the balance of our system for the years and decades to come. And so there have been a lot of um, voices speaking out against the reform that says that the pension is, will decrease. Uh, some women will be in disadvantages and not everyone will benefit from a minimum pension of 1,200 euros. Even though that was uh, promised using the media at the beginning uh, by the government to uh, push in favor of this uh, pension reform. There has been a... Um, well, I'm just, um, you know, maybe I I haven't, um, you know, read the European newspapers on this, but it strikes me that this is, in, in Shakespeare's term, um, much ado about nothing. If if um, he's changing the retirement age by, what, two years, is that a good reason to get out in the street and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, undermine the economy, undermine civil order, um, and have violence, for that matter? I don't, I don't think... Uh, if that's all it is, it ain't much. It, how much more than two years of a retirement age is it? I think it's much a bit more of about uh, retirement ages because um, the riots have amplified uh, during the tense legislative, legislative parkour because of the Procedure, procedure that has been used uh, by the government um, to push this uh, reform. Um, for example, the Article 49, Paragraph 3 uh, has been used uh, by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bourne to um, put uh, a government at stakes and so that the text wouldn't be um, debated and only voted as it was. So it's, I think, more about respect, uh, respect for um, social um, discourse and what's happening in the streets is the feeling of not being listened by the, the government. Oh. So, yeah. This is not good for Macron. Um, I, you know, I thought going back, he won the election. He was a popular fellow, although it was not that big a margin. 
um, and that people generally liked him. But it sounds like since the time he won the election, he's made moves that have alienated um, you know, him from um, the French public. Am I right? Mm -hmm. um, he was really popular on the first mandate. And then on his second mandate, before it happened uh, two years ago, um, he has been elected with uh, less more people voting for him because a lot of abstention happened. And he was um, the only reference uh, not to vote for far right uh, parties as Marine Le Pen. So why don't, why don't people just vote against him now? Throw him out of office, get rid of him. I guess somebody else will be more sympathetic to how people feel. Well, that happened because in France, we have the um, president election and then the legislative election. And so he had only a um, 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 majority that wouldn't be as much as he had on the first mandate. So he has to um, work with consensus more than putting his way uh, into the chamber. Well, you know, I, I mean, I'm not all that familiar with the way um, the French parliamentary system works, but isn't it possible that his, his party could turn against him and his party could, you know, call for a vote of confidence and his party could, his party could throw him out of office? Who, couldn't it? Uh, yeah, so that's what happened with the paragraph, uh, Article 49, Paragraph 3 of the French Constitution. Um, the, the vote was to get the confidence of the deputies and not overthrowing the government. And this vote only had passes uh, uh, for nine votes. So nine more votes was to get the, um, the government overthrown. But that's, that meant that uh, not only his party, his party, political party, voted for him, but he had to vote for um, the Republican Party, a right party, not Macron's party, uh, had to vote for him, not to get overthrown. So yeah, he has to work with consensus more than on his first mandate. Hmm. Is, you think he'll, he'll be able to stay the course, or is he politically done now with all this trouble? Well, I'm not a ex political expert, but I think it's going to be really difficult to uh, put more um, significant reforms in place now because of what happened with the pension reform. Well, when, when, when does the national vote come up again? Um, we, we saw, you know, he, he beat uh, Marine Le Pen. Um, when does that, you know, national election come up again as a matter of, um, you know, the sequence? Well, the presidential uh, election happened every five, five years, five years, so in 2027. You think he could win again? Well, no, because uh, he only can um, present himself for two mandates. Mm. And so the third mandate mm, won't happen. <laughs> okay. So what about Marine Le Pen? Does this, uh, all this trouble um, help her? Um, does she have a, a good shot at uh, beating him the, or at, at, at winning the election the next time? Um, you know, who else is there? I mean, she's kind of right wing, right wing. I mean, you're a progressive. You probably don't favor her. Uh, she has positions that are troublesome on the human rights side of things and certainly on the, uh, the Russian-Ukraine issue. Um, but uh, query, um, you know, what um, is, is that where France is going, Louis? Is France going to the right? Does this trouble in the street uh, accelerate the move to the right? Well, I'm a bit disturbed by, by that, yes, because, but, well, we, got, we still got uh, four years to, to come. And let's see what's happened next. Um, who will be um, a real figure for the next president election? But for for sure, uh, Marine Le Pen is gaining votes now, and she's uh, a figure for the next election also. Mm. Is there anybody else? 
For now, it's unclear. Uh, there is the um, new PS. It's uh, the new left uh, branch that uh, occurred for the last elections. Uh, but his um, main figure, um, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, is retiring from politics. So new figures have to, to come to get the, the lead of this uh, political party. You know, it's, it's from from a distance, it, it really sounds like an echo chamber. Uh, what I mean is, uh, so he, he takes his position about reform. He he thinks he has good reasons for it. He thinks he has, you know, he has to do this for economic reasons and to, you know, um, I don't know, improve the French economy, what have you. Um, and uh, they don't agree with him, so they go out on the street and they criticize him, and it gets in the it gets in the paper, it gets on the front page often. Um, and so what you have is uh, a reaction to what he's doing. And the reaction, in a sense, is more of a crisis than what he was doing. And so uh, at, at the end of the day, um, French, the, the, you know, France is whirled up into this, this troublesome time in its um, you know, economic and social history. Um, and I, you know, I, I think whatever he did, uh, his 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 popularity is greatly affected by the reaction. And so I say to myself, do we really need this now? We need the EU to be together. We don't need people in the street. We don't need, what do you want to call it, divisiveness, like, like we have in the United States. <laughs> we don't need that. We want people to get together and we want them to, you know, be nice to each other and agree with each other on on principal points of, um, you know, of government, of democracy, of human rights. And this doesn't sound like that at all. Um, so I worry about not only France, but the EU. It's very important. Don't you agree? It's very important that the EU stay together now. Yes. Um, my personal opinion is that you is... Uh the future and dividing you is not, isn't a solution for human rights, democracy and uh, world peace. But Emmanuel Macron has a strong uh, opinion about EU and is all for the European Union. Um, what we see in national, uh, in, in France, is that these uh, uh, protestations and manifestations has been not as much dividing in the sense that uh, there was still um, a frame, uh, like a traditional way of demonstrate. And by that, it was um, the interunion uh, organized 10 or so uh, demonstrations that gathered millions of people. But since the use of um, Article 49, Paragraph 3, there, are, there has been a, a lot of uh, spontaneous uh, demonstrations, and that's when the, the violence occurred, because I think the people seems to not be listened in the high rank of the government. Mm, too bad that um, that's too bad that exists. But you know, from a, from a distance, it all sounds like Victor Hugo uh, and Les Miserables. One would, one would expect the speech of Paris to be, um, you know, filled with barricades uh, and uh, people with the traditional tricolor outfits uh, trying to achieve whatever, you know, whatever social policy they wanted to achieve by by stopping traffic, by stopping the economy. And that's happened so much in France, like the truck drivers and the farmers, everybody out there, you know, trying to get a little attention and in the process intentionally stopping traffic, stopping the economy. Do people realize the damage they, they do, um, not only in the, in the sort of the, uh, the image of France in, in the EU and elsewhere, uh, but to the economy, the day-to-day -day economy? I mean, how is the French economy and how does this affect the French economy? Mm -hmm. Well, first, I think there is an historical way of demonstrating France. And... I wasn't myself in France when that uh, whole scene happened. Uh, I was in the United States, in Chicago. Um, but what I saw on social media 
and what I took from my uh, friends wasn't the same. And I saw a lot of things happening in social media. That happened, that for sure happened, but the um, the consequences on the day-to-day um, living isn't at that uh, far in extreme violence that we can see in um, media uh, for the vast majority of the people, even though uh, those demonstrations has been huge. And I think it was the, the more, the more, the ones that gathers the more people since 30 years. And so on the day-to-day um, living crisis, we can see a lot of inflation. I myself, as a young person, and uh, a young graduate um, see that the, the price is going up. But I don't think it's only a reason of demonstration. And I think demonstrations seems to be the best way now to have certain um, a certain way of, to act uh, for the government and to, to take place in the democratic democratic. Um, uh, scene. Uh, does it work? Is it working? Well, there's been a, a really tense legislative procedure for the, this uh, reform. And what you can see, it's, it's still not done. Um, the bill was adopted and validated by the Conseil Constitutionnel, which is the higher uh, judicial um, and judicial review institution. And, but there's still a law that occurs uh, now in the Assemblée Nationale, and it could overthrow this bill, even though it's not judged right now, but it seems that it's not, it's not finished. And uh, the social unrest is, not, is still there also. Well, we talk about social unrest, we talk about protests involving millions of people, we talk about violence. Um, what is the street scene like? Is this, all these people didn't go to work on a given day. All these people are out there and they want to be part of a protest that is heard. Um, and they are carrying signs, they are chanting, whatever you do in a protest like that. And I imagine it's not just in Paris, it's uh, elsewhere in France also. And, and the police are there because the police are supposed to you know, retain order. Um, is that the violence between the police and the protesters? Are they carrying clubs? Are they beating people up? What What's the street scene? Well, there has been, like I said, there's been uh, some declared um, demonstrations and massive uh, gathering in the streets. Um, the strikes, in every branch of the 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 industries, as for example in the refineries, uh, there were no no more gas in some stations, and so the the union were were asking to uh, call for friends in a standstill. Um, there has also have been a lot of uh, videos and media taking. A stand on what's happening in the street, much more um, uh, for the yellow vest jacket movement, um, and we can see uh, uh, um, mainstream media like Le Monde or Libération uh, using those videos to denounce what we could say police violence. But it's really uh, particularly connoted, and and some some branch wouldn't use that word and more about derailment. Uh, like, for example, the BRAP M, uh, which is a motorcycle police force, uh, has been criticized after um, a, um, a recording of some of individuals, uh, individuals um, um, asking and um, insinuating of, of some violence that's going to be happening to the protesters if they still continue to, to protest. Um, have, have you been out into these protests? Are, are they dangerous? 
uh, if, are they uh, uh, as an experience you want to have? Well, like, like I said, I was in, in the United States when all that occurs, mm. occurred, but um, I got some friends that went to those protests and it seemed really dangerous for pacifist pe uh, Pacific people um, to go in those protests. And we know now, since several years, uh, that people are getting uh, hurt. Uh, in in those protests, are they getting killed? Uh, there are not been uh, people that have been killed, but there are a lot of people that have been um, the eyes has been thrown uh, and exploded because of the the use of the um, the um, plastic cannons. Mm, oh, deep, is that terrible? So, how long is this going to last? I know that's a hard question. Uh, you know what? What's the net? You know these things. Over time, they come and they go. Uh, whether there's a real resolution or not, they come and they go. How long is this going to last in France? It's part. It's almost part of the culture from Victor Hugo on forward. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, like for the Yellow Vest Jacket movement, uh, it happened um, just before COVID crisis. And I think that uh, just put down on the, the social unrest and the demonstrations because of all, of all the, the securities we have to took on uh, sanitary uh, measures. Uh, but I think this movement is also a continuation of the Yellow Vest uh, movement. So I think people um, don't feel um, listened and and so I think if not, if the government w won't accept this, um, these protesters and the, the, the things that come with, and, and that there is a negotiation and an open, open discourse on those problems that France is facing, I think the, the protest will continue and this social unrest will, will continue, yes. You know, I haven't, um, you know, followed these protests in the past, uh, and I wasn't around in the 1830s uh, for Victor Hugo. Um, but um, I, I wonder, this sounds like it's the worst protest, the worst series of protests that you've seen uh, that we've heard about. Um, and more people involved, um, more stress and strain, more contention with the government. So am I right? This, this one's worse than before, isn't it? I don't know if it's worse, but fortunately, it's much more documented. Documented. Um, so now we can we can assess the things that are happening in in the streets. Um, even uh, international organizations as um, um, put their concerns on on what's happening in in, in the streets and. So the fact that images are coming out out of the streets is a, a good fact, I think, to to see what are the problems and how we could work on it. You said international organizations are interested. What kind of organizations and why are they interested and what can they do about it? Yes. Um, we had uh, the United Nations Special Rapporteur of Freedom of Physicians that put concern on that. But also uh, the League of Human Rights and Amnesty International. Um, I think those organizations and inst institutions um, just by by um, by taking out the, 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 those concerns and saying that there is a problem in what we see is. Um, not naming and shaming, but putting a word and uh, eyes on what's happening. And that's what the main role of uh, international organizations uh, is for, like putting the eyes on what's happening and um, working on those issues. Human rights issues, yeah. civil rights issues. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I, I um... You know, we, we have trouble in this country, um, as you know, and um, there are people really on both sides of the aisle 
calling for systemic reform, um, reform of mm, our American constitution, if you will, um, because it doesn't seem to be working. And if I give you a million people in the, in the streets of France, um, you know, I, I would have to consider the, the same possibility that uh, it's if the if the government isn't listening and the um, the million people can't seem to be heard, then doesn't that mean that the French system, whatever it is, the French constitution isn't working very well and it needs to be systemic reform? Um, I mean, on a larger scale, not just the issues they're protesting over, but the way the government is set up to respond um, to the sensibilities of the public. Uh, is there talk in France about that? Yes. Um, so the, um, the French Constitution um, has been written in 1958. Um, it gives a lot of power to the French president. And that because of uh, the fact that the French presidential elections is happening just before the legislative elections. And so when a president is elected, um, uh, deputies will uh, be on the same political party. So that gives a lot of power to the French president. But if not revised, the, the constitution um should, it's not I, I don't think it's a legal issue but much more uh, individual ways of things uh how, how, how to engage a constructive dialogue between um, the institutions government and civil society uh in a in a democracy i think we need um a constructive dialogue that puts everyone everyone in uh, the discussion. That's an alternative to the voting process, isn't it? And we, we have the same problem. But let me mm -hmm. let me go to this though. I mean, we know um, that social media and smartphones are everywhere. And there are five year old children who have social media and smartphones and spend all day on them in the United States. And I imagine, I believe that that's the same situation in, in Europe and certainly in France. So you have social media, which can be good or maybe not so good. And you have the smartphones and you have the ability of mm, uh, interested parties with an agenda who like to create divisiveness. And we know that Vladimir Putin likes to do that. He has the resources, he has the experts, and he has done it in various countries around Europe and um, and the United States, you know, to divide people on various issues. Uh, Vladimir Putin is probably happy to see France in contention with itself like this. So my question to you, and, and maybe there's no data, but I'm interested in your thoughts about it. How much is this divisiveness that we see on the streets between the people and the government a function of social media? How much do you think uh, Vladimir Putin is involved in that divisiveness in creating that divisiveness. Well, I, I don't know for Vladimir Putin, but what I I saw is that on social media we 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 had a lot of um, violence occurring in the streets, and what's happening in those the uh, demonstrations is well documented, well documented, and that's a good thing. Uh, but it does not force, uh, forcibly uh, represent the wall of what's happening in France. Um, and I think our generation, my generation, is um, much more connected. And so it has a duty to, to, to inform themselves on the, the best way possible. Like we have to do research and criticize those, those findings and have multiple um, source of on how to to get the the good information and the, the criticism of, of information well you're associated uh, directly or indirectly with uh, project expedite justice and human rights and civil rights and 
you know, doing the right thing for civil society, of course. And um, you want to do your part, obviously. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be in that if you didn't want to do your part in it. There's a whole generation coming up in the world today. It's, um, you know, hard to say whether they will prevail or not, um, because you have mm, the good and maybe the not so good, uh, you know, contending with each other. But let me ask you this. Um, Which way is the path for somebody like you in France and for that matter in Europe? Is it is it to write, you know, and make public statements? Is it to get out there in the street or somehow the support um, the, or encourage the protests in the street and help to focus them so the government is more sympathetic uh, to their sensibilities? Or maybe this is an and also, and or um, is, is your thought and the thought of your generation, is why don't we get into government? Uh, why don't we run for office? Uh, why don't we try to change it? Um, by being a a public official. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, for myself, I'm still looking for that way. Um, I think think, um, my generation and and myself, um, we we will do right because, um, but the the thing is to, to stay open on everything you you humanistic in a humanistic way uh we had to be on a union and um we we sh- we should uh, be open to multicultural um backgrounds uh multilingual as a european i'm i'm just for the union of of the people and and so about uh, in, uh, investigating the, the political process of how to represent myself and others. Um, I think we, there's a lot of people doing a lot of work uh, in my generation, uh, fighting about, about uh, climate uh, crisis and political crisis and democ- democracy crisis. And I think the, the fruits of that effort will, will, will come one day. Help uh, soon enough. How does uh, how does this, your generation feel about Ukraine? Um, that's a tough question. Um, because I I, I think I think um, I I won't represent um, everyone, but for myself, it's. It's really, 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 really sad because um, I know I know that the, the war is everywhere, everywhere, and ev- all the time. But now it's at the door of Europe, and and it's once more um, international law and human human rights being violated, and that's just a shame. Do you think your generation will support the continuation of the support for Ukraine? Well, for Ukraine and all the conflicts and human violations occurring now, I think yes. I mm. think we, I am, and we are much in in the fighting for human rights uh, against human rights violations and all civil and economic rights. Thank you, Louis. Um, vous êtes très gentil. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> With pleasure. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.